Top 10 things you should never do in Zenesk. All right, off we go. Hi, customer experience community. This is Dominic. Welcome to another video. For those of you who are tuning in for the first time, my name is Dominic. I'm a customer experience enthusiast and Zenesk consultant. Been around for a decade and I'm here to share some of the things that I've learned and let's go. Number one, overcomplicate ticket forms. So as you know, you can use ticket forms in order to categorize requests, in order to share these with your customers, in order to share these with your agents or your agents know how to categorize requests in order to cater to your different flows. Now, what I see in people's Zena setup is usually duplicates of ticket fields. People create two forms and then they create two of the same ticket fields. So they have ticket type and then they have ticket type two because they need to use it in a different form. And then they create ticket type number three to use in form number three and so on and so forth. No, don't do that. Just use one ticket field which you can just repeat throughout all your forms. Obviously not just ticket type, but address, customer information, type of customer, you name it. That all depends on your niche. So don't overcomplicate ticket forms with too many ticket fields. Now for the customer experience, imagine that you are on the receiving end and you receive a form or you're on, a, on your guides or somewhere else where you see your form and your customer has to fill in I don't know, 15, 20 fields, even more fields. Wow, that is overwhelming and not sexy at all. <laughs> so what you wanna do is you wanna keep it ideally in 10 fields max. That's what the best practice I can give you for this, 10 fields max. If you can, and if you must collect more information from your customer, use conditional fields, right? So if I choose this uh, option in my dropdown, then show me these five fields. If I chose a different option, then show me some other two fields or five fields, right? So you make a condition based on what you choose from your dropdown. From the agent experience, it's the same. An agent that becomes overwhelmed with too many ticket fields to fill in is not going to fill in those ticket fields and it's just going to leave your information scattered and uh, incomplete. Number two, let agents use tags. So in Zendesk, you have two options. You can either let it open so agents can add a tag by themselves, or you can just restrict it so you only add the tags as an admin or with business rules. Now, in small organizations, I understand that you know you keep yourself accountable much easier, so you can let your agents choose their tags. However, in organizations with five or more agents, don't leave that open. Just leave it up to you and your business rules to add the tags. Now, why this is useful and beneficial is because you eliminate the human error factor. Now, somebody you know needs to add a tag and then they hit a typo in there when they type that tag then that tag is going to stick and it's going to remain there and it's going to be stamped against your Zendesk account and you can't even delete it so it's just junk which you don't need right so try to limit human error as much as possible it's nobody's fault that you create a typo I do that everybody does that so it's fine right just try to limit that to using tags with business rules. That's it. Number three never skip asking for feedback. Okay this is a difficult one I need a sip of coffee. Whew, we need to have a conversation. I've seen too many organizations trying to skip asking for feedback. Now, why that is, is because it comes with a lot of responsibility, right? If you ask for feedback, you have to fix it. So <laughs> it's obviously hard, right? It means you have to go the extra mile. You have to make the extra effort and nobody wants to do that, right? Everybody wants to just uh, finish up real quick and then just uh, run over to, you know, focus on life, which is fine. However, you as a business owner or a head of customer experience or a head of uh, customer service or head of support, you have a moral duty for your customer to do right by them. So if you want to do right, collect feedback. Don't avoid getting honest feedback. It's the most effective way to better your product or better your service or see if you have a bug in your system or see how you can actually progress forward. So never skip on asking for feedback, as painful as it may be. Never look agent performance. Now in your reports, you can go to the uh, dashboards for support, for example, and you can look for efficiency and look for what how your agents are doing. If your agents are doing fine, just take them one by one, see how many tickets they're solving, see how many tickets they're not solving, see how many tickets they're leaving on pending, see how many tickets they're escalating to someone else. Why this matters is because you can catch, for example, uh, people who might just need a training in order to perform better. Or you have some people who are just slacking off and maybe you can, uh, uh, replace their work with a bot because it's repetitive, right? They don't like to do that. Where they can be repurposed to do something else that they, they enjoy more. So there's a lot of insight that you can get if you watch agent performance. I don't know if you're that kind of organization that offers incentives based on performance. Incentives only work if it's very repetitive and people you know, don't enjoy what they're doing. If it's something creative that involves using analytical skills, then no. You just have to make sure that you pay the right salary. This is 
is just some information I've gathered as a bonus uh, on what makes people more motivated. So look for agent performance and see how you can improve their performance, see what they actually need. Also have some very direct conversations and honest ones about performance and how you can improve and what suggestions you might have for that to happen. Next one on the list is neglecting self-service options. Self-serving options are varied. So you can start with a knowledge base. That's the baseline of everything running smooth. You have your processes that you document about how to solve requests, processes on how customers can help themselves, right? How to change my password, how to download an invoice, how do I turn on my device? How do I troubleshoot my device? How do I use your service, etc. Customers need a way to Google what they are trying to solve. And when they find it on Google, they'll be able to solve it themselves, right? Which is great, you save time and you save money for your company. And you also increase your brands by having this uh, information available for your customers because not everybody wants to pick up the phone or interact with somebody. They just want to find it themselves. People are very proactive like that and they prefer it. Another self-service option is obviously bots, right? But this can only come after you have your knowledge base in place. So a bot is good as uh, the information that you feed it. If you don't have any information to feed it, like for example, a knowledge base, it can scan to see what it can match with what the customer is asking. That's how you go about it. You have to have a uh, knowledge base to start with. Now, in what regards agents? So agents also have the ability to have a knowledge base for themselves. So it's an internal knowledge base that only agents can use for themselves to see how they can solve processes. Agents that don't have a documented process or how to solve requests are always going to rely on somebody to tell them how to do it. So if you're a team leader or a head of customer service, your agents are always gonna ask you, how do I do this? How do I do that? Well, if you have something written down, you can just reference them to read that or they can just find it themselves in the private knowledge base. Another thing that you should never do in Zendesk is underutilize automations or not use automations. Automations in Zendesk are time-based business rules. So. If an hour has passed since my request has been in pending, then send a message to the customer, send a message to the team leader, send a message to the agent, send a message to, I don't know, to whoever. So that is an automation, just the gist of it. If you don't utilize these in order to uh, make sure that you have your request well prioritized and make sure that you get back to the customer, then you're missing out on a bunch of productivity hacks that you can use. Now there's many best practices and a few of them are essentially to you know follow up with the customer with the customer satisfaction after 24 hours or another one is to chase the customer if you're on pending status and you're waiting for more information for them. Another automation you can use is for example if a request has the SLA breaching in two hours send a message to the assignee of that ticket and make sure that they get back to the customer before the SLA is being broken. I have an excellent ebook on how to go about uh, setting up your Zendesk in order to be efficient. It's in the description of this video. It's called best practice tips to automate your Zendesk. I know, I know I'm giving you a lot of homework, but it's for the best. This is what successful companies do and this is precisely why they are successful. So I'm giving all this information for free have at it, download it, read it, and do a better job. Another thing you should never do in Zenesk is not monitor and analyze the type of requests that come into the system. So if you just uh, run a support system that does not necessarily uh, collect the right information to categorize your requests and collect information, about the user so you can help the agent so you can help yourself with good reporting then you're missing out you're missing out on the possibility to actually have a smooth running system if you are overlooking the kind of tickets that come into the system and don't categorize them then you won't be able to have reports with those reports you can make the right business decisions and see oh look there's too many tickets that are reporting a, a, a bug in my system or there's too many people complaining about a delivery service in whatever city oh look there's a service that is actually not not being provided very well and I need to actually have a conversation with I don't know whoever. Also you're missing out on the opportunity to have your agents get more training. In reports you can see how uh, agents are performing with different types of requests. Some requests for example which are for example a newer launch to your service or your products that you're selling. This new addition could be potentially unknown to the agents and they might just need some training in order to do it better. So you're missing out on that. 
lacking proper agent training and onboarding. In order to have a successful customer service and customer experience, you have to have good training for your agents. Now, when you start with Zendesk, you need to have a proper onboarding so the system goes smooth and well-oiled and it's able to catch in the right types of information in order to categorize the requests, in order to prioritize the requests and in order to display them to the agent so they can work on them. Not integrate with other tools. Now, as you know, Zendesk is a very dynamic platform that can easily integrate with other platforms. You have a very friendly API that you can connect with other systems. And now Zendesk has had a new addition, which is called ZIS or Zendesk Integration Services, which is an upgrade to their API, which makes it even easier to connect with your database wherever it might be. Now, the, obviously, the easiest way to connect with uh, Zendesk uh, API is through the cloud. But of course, there are variants and there are options if you have a different uh, customized system. What you can start out with is you can start in the marketplace of Zendesk, which has uh, 1500 plus apps and integrations so what you can do is you can integrate with other systems that you use because in all honesty Zendesk is one of the tools that you use in order to run your business right so you use something else for finance, you use something else for project management, you use something else for um, uh, workforce management, for sales, time tracking, etc. You can bring all of these together in Zenus in order to have uh, complete information and context in order to help your agents solve requests. Imagine integrating with your backend where you have your customer database, where you have all the information about your customers that is just lying there and it can be easily pulled across in Zenus so you can see that information. An agent can see that information, has context, context that knows who the customer is, what kind of orders they had with you, their history with you, but they can have a lot more context to help this customer faster, right? You give them more context to just solve the request then and there. Otherwise, you just have to have a gazillion tabs open and uh, get confused on where you open what and you're just wasting time because you have to open new tabs and uh, log in again to your backend or log in again to your other tools that you use for, I don't know, project management, bug fixing, etc. So bring everything together into Zendesk. Start with the marketplace good on you. Another final thing that you should never do in Zendesk is to overcomplicate the views. Don't have too many views. First off, views in Zendesk are folders in which you can see your tickets. It's essentially your dashboard where you can see the tickets that come into the system and you're able to be more productive because you can easily categorize which tickets come and which tickets have to go in what folder. Simplicity is best. Less is more. This is what I always say. As you know, there's 12 available views in Zenesk on the left hand side plus two more if you're an admin so you have 14 in total however a regular agent only sees 12 but that is too much already now I have a workaround for three views and that's it that you can use it's for example the tickets that are new that have not been assigned tickets that belong to me and me only and number three is tickets unsolved in my departments or in my groups now with these three views that's all you need and if you set these up right then you won't need any more so you make everything more simple for your agents so they can see exactly how to work in Zenesk and always be clear on exactly what they need to work on. And that's it. The simpler the setup, the better. All right. So this has been the update so far for today. I hope this brought you value. I'll see you in the next one and keep safe.